We've been doing these kind of um, worship times over the past two years, um, dubbed organic worship just because we didn't know what else to call them, which is basically heavily pinned on spontaneous songs coming out and as we worship, just singing what we feel the Lord is singing and people then join in. And it just has just lots of testimonies of it being a very powerful time um, and God, God talking to people in remarkable ways and really, I guess, answering deep insecurities and solving things in a way that I, I would never have never have imagined. And so we were kind of worshipping uh, back in January with a few of the songs that have come out of these spontaneous worship times and just just had the idea of actually it'd be quite fun to record some of them and do like a live worship time to catalogue some of the some of the songs that we've done and then also that they can then be used as a framework to go off into more spontaneous songs. And so we're looking to have the, the live worship time, looking to have a few videos, some pictures, some paintings, and all available on the same website just for, for people to see and people join and experience in that kind of the fruit of the community and, and the worship that we did together. It's not just singing songs, it's, it's, it's much broader than that. It's a lifestyle thing. It's, I think the easiest way that I describe it is it's just relating with God. And music is just a way that seems to be created by God to communicate and relate to him in a very powerful way. And so in scripture you see it throughout the Psalms and even in um, 1 and 2 Kings you see examples of worship being used to, to bring victory in battle. We see worship being used as a way to articulate deep pain and deep frustration. I, th I think that the pursuit of excellence is extremely godly. Um, but it's, but it's never the aim. Worship always starts with the heart. And um, in Chronicles, when they set up the, the temple where, where God dwells, they set up a continual 24-7 rotor of worship. And they say that anyone who has a heart for worship is involved in that team and gets trained. And so it always starts with people who are eager to worship. And then, and then they get trained and, and schooled in how to be excellent. So I think it's really important to be pursuing excellence, but I don't think not being excellent is an excuse not to, not to step into worship. You know, I, I often feel like the Lord asks me to do different things and set things up, and, and I, I tend to be quite a, a proactive person in, in trying to set things up and Sometimes I feel quite pressured in that and I feel like there's so much I have to do and it rests on my shoulders to do it and I find that quite hard and, and quite pressurising. And I worship time back in February. Um, just the, the overwhelming feeling of God is with me. And I, and I just was, I just burst into tears and, there was, and God didn't really say anything. He was just with me. And in that moment when he's with me, every pressure that I've been putting on myself to achieve certain things dissolves because I remember that if he's given me something, then he wants to achieve it through me. I don't have to try and strive and do it myself. Like he's gonna open doors. I just need to be faithful to what he gives me. And, and there's no pressure in that. And like, I'm not a dad yet, but I should imagine that when I am, or when I look at how my father related to me, he didn't mind if I was good or bad at art or, or, or um, DT, that's what it's called. But like, when I made him something at DT and I took it to him, no matter how rubbish it was, he loved it. But it's because I did it for him. And I think that's often the same with worship and, and, and sung worship and all types of worship actually, is that if I'm doing it with a heart that's just going, I just wanna, I just wanna give my dad a gift, then no matter how good or bad it is, then, then it's, he loves it because he loves the heart. That's the thing he's after. And for, if you want to just start engaging song worship in a way that um, has been amazingly powerful for us, it's just beginning to sing out truths about God. What, feel, what, what does it feel like he's saying? What does it feel like he's singing? Just start singing. And, and, and see other people join in or just do it by yourself, but just start singing about it and just see where he takes you. The, the brilliant thing about worship is we do it for him, but we always do it with him. And that's glorious because he's always with us in whatever we're singing for him. So he can tell us what, what's appropriate for us to be singing to him. It's just it's wonderful. It makes it really easy. So knowing that God is with me in every circumstance means when I worship, He's with me, telling me and leading me into all truth about how to worship. Yeah, you have a father who's just incredible, and and he. 
and I wish he knew. Because he, he solved, he, he is the solution to insecurity and to fear and to despair and disappointment. And he, and he's so for you because he made you. And a relation, and, and there's an open invitation to be in a, in a, to be with him all the time. And to become, in, and in doing that, becoming everything that you ever wanted to be, even if you didn't realise it. And all we're doing is looking at that God, that Father in heaven, and just going, wow. Like, that's all we're doing. Show me the fire, show me the fire.